Because we're both essentially the same height, which I always say to people, you know, how did you guys meet? I said, I was so tired of kicking midgets. <laughs> we walked through the door, and he's my height, and he's got thighs like this. <laughs> And I said, hey, do you want to work out together? I said that last time. I don't remember if it was you or me who approached, but I think oh. we both went, hey, there's a guy who's my side. Right. So, I'm, I'm pretty sure you approached me. I, I have this vague recollection of you like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I was, so, I was so tired of it. Not, I was this, the kidney shit with it. I just lost people in the next week, and I was like, oh, horrible. So, <sighs> come along. Come along is what we call this. Come along. Just awareness, mm. Be, becoming aware, becoming more awake. Mm. Um, to come up with something to call this this sort of I don't even like the word drill or exercise because it's really not that. Mm. Although it ends up being that, mm. I don't think of it as a as a boxed exercise. Like mm. this is the exercise. I don't think of that one. Mm. Uh, the best analogy I, I've, I've mentioned this to you before. The best analogy for Kamalayan is Rangori. Ah. Okay. Rangori is can be many things, but essentially the, the term that Ali used in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is rolling. Wrong, yeah. But Rangori doesn't really mean rolling. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually much more comprehensive in, in the terminology, but really what we're talking about is well, let's explore. Mm -hmm. And we can do this, you know, fascinating. But so the more skilled you are, the more seasoned you are in the art, the more you appreciate going slow. Because mm. anybody can be caught with speed, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and especially with the weapons, how do we play that game? Yeah, that's, that's going to hurt. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> we, we just can't. And, and it's, it's always bothered me because all of the exercises in the Philippine martial arts are, are fed exercises. Mm. They're cooperative and, they're, and or they are fed. Okay. Murata was fed, Palakao was fed from Balloon to Lock. Sabrata is cooperative, it's like we're playing catch and yeah. feel with baseballs. So I wanted to come up with something that was unknown. But we didn't have armor up. Mm. We could protect each other. Mm. So a couple of things came about. I just started doing it by the way. And I don't know if I've ever talked to you about why this came about. Yeah, I don't think but you mentioned why. It started it started to there's this this word niggling. Something niggling, kind of niggling, niggling right. a thing that yeah. niggled at me for the longest time, and, and I've, I've probably mentioned it in some way, shape, or form in our conversations over the years. It always bothered me when, when I would hear about these 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 people that we never got to meet. They, they, they can do this. They, they yes. can do that. And a couple of things that they would do that we never did, but they did. <laughs> they, did. <laughs> they could disarm every angle. Uh, they could counter disarm every attempt mm -hmm. at a disarm. They, they, we're not they going to come to class. Can we, use, can yeah. we be they? Yeah. And, and, and we never did it. Uh -huh. Whether it was with teachers we know or, or teachers I've had, they talked about these, these ubiquitous they people, mm. but they never actually did this. So mm. it, it really irritated me. After all, I just got sick and tired of hearing it. Mm -hmm. don't, if, you're gonna, if, you're, if they're going to do that, then let's go train with them. I don't, don't want to talk about this anymore. So I initially started saying, okay, I'm going to disarm every angle. Mm. And then I started very quickly realizing that the way this arm was sort of taught, and this is almost a whole separate issue, was backwards. That, and I understand why they're taught this way. I'm going to hit you with a number one, and you are going to do a, a snake disarm. Okay. There's nothing wrong with that because I'm, I'm giving the opportunity to see what a snake disarm this arm is. But if I just hit you like this, yeah, it's not gonna happen. how are you going to do this? <laughs> not gonna happen. So I haven't, even, I haven't even created a real problem yet because I'm not. I have no intention, I have no desire to create great bodily injury or death. I'm just going a little bit faster and not posing. Yes. And yes. right away, right away, oh, it all tells it right. So, so right away, to put it in the simplest terms, right away this time it became bullshit. Mm. So nobody could pull it off. And, and then I, as I started exploring this, I went and sought out very high level people, master and grandmaster level people, to just play with. Mm. And said, disarm me. Mm. None of them could disarm me. Mm -hmm. And not because I was doing any magic, but just because I wasn't posing and being cooperative. Yeah, you were actually moving. Wasn't being, a, wasn't being a jerk about mm -hmm. it. Was just saying, disarm me when I'm not cooperative. Yes. And then I could disarm them at will. Mm -hmm. Because for two reasons. First of all, the, the methodology of how to disarm, I changed the way I looked at it. And second of all, their systems are predictable. Mm. Okay, so I know exactly what they're going to do, and they always do it, and they're reliable. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I, 
and no disrespect to them, but they're in prison in their system, and that's a, that's a problem. That's we're, both, we're both JKD guys, so we understand this idea. So, this only doesn't work in a defensive format, mm -hmm. period. It's, it's considered, sadly, it is considered a, dis, a, a defensive idea. Yeah, oh, he's going to attack me, and I will disarm him. And I do the disarm. Yeah. And then the question I always ask to my students is, what's the purpose of disarm? Mm -hmm. Almost everybody who doesn't really think about it mm -hmm. will say, well, you're taking away his weapon so he can't attack you. Mm -hmm. Hey, hold on a second. Can I not attack you? No, you can attack me. <laughs> I'm, actually, I'm like, wow, both my hands are okay, so, right now. so many yeah. different shots. Okay, so, so that's right away false. Mm. So if I, haven't, if I haven't stolen back the distance to give me the advantage and take that advantage away from you, then I haven't really stopped mm. you from me. Mm. So that's, that's faulty. That, that thinking doesn't make sense. Mm. Really, the purpose of disarming you is to take away your ability to effectively defend yourself against me. Yeah. To get it. Okay. Tactical advantage. Yes. It's just part of the. So it's it's offensive. Mm -hmm. It's not defensive mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. I take your weapon away and I keep attacking. Well, now good luck blocking my stick. Yeah. yeah. Their hand. Yeah, okay. yeah. You can. You'll be able to block it. I can feel good. I think you'll be able to have to really talk in this. Their arms will be misshapen. Okay. So. So right away, if, if the idea, the principle of disarming is counteroffensive, then why don't we do disarms in a counteroffensive mm -hmm. format as opposed to practicing them in isolation, admittedly, in a defensive format, mm -hmm. which is the way they're always taught. The person stands over the stick in the approved position, mm -hmm. and you do all your cool mm -hmm. techniques, right. which again, isn't wrong. It's okay to, to introduce the technique that way. But you have to right away take it back to counteroffensive. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's important to, of course, say, what do I mean? By counteroffensive, somebody who doesn't understand what that principle means, it would be difficult. I have to be the person who's attacking. Mm. Mm. If I'm going to disarm you, I have to attack you first. Yeah. So if I'm attacking you on the board, you, you cannot block. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, and then you, you have to disarm. If I'm, if I'm attacking well, you have two choices mm -hmm. get hit or parry. Yes. Period. If you have a third choice, it's because I'm not attacking well. Mm -hmm. okay, so, for yes. example, if, like if we're at single temper distance, we're outside of range, we can't really reach each other. If I make what, what I refer to as the classic error, mm -hmm. which I'm stepping into range, oh, yeah. Yeah. okay, well now I've given you a third choice. Right. But if I'm at this range and I wind up now and I attack, well yeah. now you have two choices. Right. Okay, so, so I have created, I love this word, an exigent circumstance. Oh, okay. I like that. An emergency. You have, you have, no, you have no choice. Okay? Ultimately, everything we're doing in the Filipino martial arts, because of the velocity of the weapon, is excellent. Mm -hmm. You have no time. Mm -hmm. if, I, if, I, if you hit me with a one and I'm doing a four, how much time do you have? I don't care how fast my weapon is going. In this case, the velocity of my weapon is immaterial. It's the length of time you have to decide on your action and execute, you don't have any time. So, so, right away, exigent circumstances. Sambrana ultimately, and in my Sambrana course, I talk about this a lot. Sambrana ultimately is, is designed to create exigent circumstances. That's what the exercise is for. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you had your. This is one of those words, I, I, I like language a lot, you know that there. It's one of those words that we never use except in this phrase. If I had my druthers. If I had my brothers. No, that's true. What, if, what the fuck are brothers? <laughs> I don't say brothers. Let me get my brothers out. Oh, no, I had my brothers, but I don't have them. They're back at home. <laughs> not my brothers. <laughs> so, if I had my brothers, would if you had your brothers, and I was coming at you with my 90 mile an hour angry six shot, mm -hmm. would you do an inside sleep? I would not. If, I mean, unless... If I could not get out of range, if I had... And you said a magic because, word. You said a magic word, the range. The range. So, you can even go to the Sabrata course and find this. Inside sleep is a range-specific skill. Yeah. It's like a needle-nose pliers. It's, mm. it's not just a generic tool. It is a specific tool. If you hit me with another one, and I happen to, because of exigency, mm -hmm. I happen to block this one and hit you here, mm -hmm. now you have zero time. You have to do an inside sleep. Yeah. Right. That's the, I've created the emergency and given you no choices. I've constrained your responses. So, but if I'm not here, why on earth would you ever? First of all, it won't work. No. Right. Yeah. For okay. sure. You're, you're going to eat. You're going to eat it. Right. Okay. You're, you're going to hit your own yeah, stick. Yeah, it, the, it's not the gonna stick's going to hit here. 
My six is going to hit me, and then your six. Yes, hit me. it's not going to work. So that's what actually happens. Yes. So the problem is when 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 you're and I know you, my brother, you would not do this, but when people teach this, they don't give you any circumstance. They don't give you anything to relate it to. So many times, especially because Sambhava is so fun, mm -hmm. they'll start day one yes, with start Sambhava. With Sambhava. Okay, so these are specific tools, Neo knows pliers. Okay, they're specific tools for a specific circumstance, but they don't actually illuminate the circumstance. So mm -hmm. now they're thinking, an inside soup is how you block a number one. Yeah, yeah exactly. Then they pull up some gas and go this like this. this. Exactly. Right. Right. Hit, him right. hit him in the abs, he's going to die. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because we're hitting him in the abs, we could be. Oh, okay. that's better. <laughs> Unquestionably. Un un <laughs> so they'll put on gear and they'll start to spar, and all of a sudden they'll realize this doesn't work. I had that experience. Yes. Yes. So, so, the, so the disease that will happen, and, and it un understandably so, is that it will be an all or nothing response. Mm -hmm. Okay. All of this doesn't work. Throw it all out. I've heard checking doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Well, the that's what you're saying. You don't have to check, and yeah. you don't know what the circumstance is when yes. checking will play. Correct. Um, also, when you put on a mask, you become fearless to things that you will not be fearless mm -hmm. of when you don't have a mask on. So, you, so right away, you have to change the way you look at things. And also, the way that most people teach checking is not checking; it's just tapping. Mm, oh yeah, they, they go tap. Right. So. <laughs> this is this is meaningless. And I, and I oftentimes will say, "What does the word to remove it from martial art? When, when do we use the word check? Mm. You know, I could check the temperature. Yeah. I could check the flow of water, mm. which is an even better mm -hmm. yeah, key better. to check to control. This is how checking is used in the Philippine martial arts. It's yeah. not touching." Yeah, it's impeding. It's impeding. So, impeding control. It's setting up. I can get into situations. I can absolutely, certainly use it as a, as a, what are you doing? Checking on you. Checking on your mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. Because you know mm -hmm. that when you are checking me, mm -hmm. I am also checking you. That's right. Yes. Okay? Yes. We are both in this. This is a relationship for two of us. I'm feeling you as well. I'm going to, especially in Samada, because there are rules in Samada, when you attack me, you have to release the check. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me when you're going to attack, by the way. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting lots of information. Mm -hmm. It's a lot we can do Samada with our eyes closed. Okay? Sure. Because sure. so much information is coming through our hands. So when we remove that, when we say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to go one for one or two for or three, whatever the, the chosen pattern design is, it's all crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't get rid of it. Right. So what if we don't have any of that? How do, we, how do we practice it? This is what I started to explore. Again, it started with disarming every angle and then counter disarming and then checking and counter checking. I think I did some bottom with you when I showed you how you can do double checking, which is really cool. Yeah, like, I, like you go to block and check and I counter, counter check, check my turn. Right. Okay, you know, when you hit me, uh -huh. and I go to hit I go to you counter yes. check me. It's a, it makes people's heads go. <laughs> this is <laughs> three dimensional chess. Yes. Okay. So, and then I'll, I think I've also talked about doing verbal chess with you. I like if I if I hit you with a number one, your points out, but you block. Ah, uh, yeah, yes, that's right. The inside two, you hit me with a four, and you drop some hit number one, your points down, you go high inside one, you hit me. You can do it back and forth, and then I can do this verbal. Some, ver I'll try English. Verbal sabata. <laughs> <laughs> I can do verbal sabata with you at the same time I'm doing physical sabata with you, uh, and have them not be related to each other. Oh wow! So that's now cool. your mind is doing two things at once. Genius. Okay, so this is really, it's good because, and I, I, I don't know because I haven't asked you, we've just, we're just spitballing, okay, yeah. okay, we haven't set this up, so, you and I, we're kind of known, if people have seen us doing Sambada from, what is it, 40,000 years ago, I think? <laughs> About that, oh. it might be 38,000 years ago. We're known for going very fast. Yeah. And in fact, we experiment, I can tell you, we experiment, we, we would get really light sticks and say, let's, let's push the speed. Let's get up there where, where we can't actually see it anymore. Yeah. Like, ancient, arms. ancient yeah. crazy speed. So let's just play a little bit. I want to show this to you. Yes, please. Um, a couple of ideas I want to go into are, this little side note, in, in Western fencing, since you've done fencing, one of the things I, I appreciate enormously about fencing is that, for the most part, the terminologies that they use in fencing do not refer to techniques. They refer to tactics. Mm, true. Disengage. And so it's not really the technique. Uh, it's a tactical thing. So you're actually describing 
an action against a thinking opponent, mm. as opposed to naming a technique and yeah. not yeah. whatever. See what I mean? Yeah. So it's that's really a important. Distinction. Yeah, and, and Western fencing is devoid of, of mysticism. It's just uh -huh. technology for killing. And it's performance based. Yes. It's yeah. about performance. Yes. Not, yeah. Hmm. So the idea of, of looking at a tactic, in, in, in my school, for all the years I've been teaching, my definition of tactics is organization of circumstances in your favor. So, Man, that's okay. a good definition. So, ha, that's, it's, a, it's a good definition, but I, I just recently had a student ask me, well, what do you mean by that? And I said, well, if, I, if I'm fighting with you in a ring, I can cut off the ring. Okay, I'm organizing your steps and my steps so that you eventually run out of space and now I don't have to hunt you, I can just go after mm. you. So that would be one example. If I'm, it was grab up your stick, if I take you here and I attack you, why am I making contact with a weapon that I know is going to block me? Okay, so I'm, this is a circumstance that I want to have happen because it gives me something. So I'm organizing the circumstance in my favor. Mm. So I draw your defense. I, in fencing, we use the phrase "make threat." Uh -huh. I'm making threat. I draw. I, you have to pair it. Yeah, I, because <laughs> I don't know. If, you can it choose, looks like a threat. Once again, you can choose not to. Yes. <laughs> okay. Also, so it's a threat. So you have to pair. So as soon as you pair, now I can. Uh -huh. I, I, I can take your weapon. Now I know if you have Brendan in your head right. that you're going to be motivated to reach for my yeah, weapon. So now, can, now yes. I can. Now I can continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So so I'm organizing that, and I'm not, right, right now we're being static. We're not right, right. So, so we don't leave the camera. Yes. <laughs> you just hear noise. And awful <laughs> screens in the background. So, but when we're, what I'm really doing is I'd be adjusting to everything. I'd be never giving you the distance. I, in, in, on my on my school mural, big letters, keep your distance. Uh -huh. We often in English we tend to think of that phrase as that means stay away. Yeah. But actually, keep hold on to maintain is to maintain your yes. the uh -huh. distance that's most advantageous to you. Mm. Keep your distance. Mm. So if I'm if I'm if I'm six three, if I'm dealing with somebody who's five ten, I'm gonna hold on to that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Especially with a weapon. Mm. Okay. Because if I can just keep you out here and give you the action out here, why on earth get inside? Right. Get or if I want to get inside, why would I let you get away? Mm. Yeah. Okay. And 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 this letting is a great word I use in class all the time: acquiescence. Ah, okay. To acquiesce, to give in, to, yes. to basically surrender. The most common place that people acquiesce is there. Oh. They just let themselves be grabbed. I see. You can that. Yeah. I here, I can come But out. most people just go, oh. well, my, my, my non-scientific theory, hmm. I'm your father. You're the kid. Oh. Come with me. You learn this. What's, what's the benefit of pulling away? Yeah, you do. Oh, right. <laughs> Absolutely. So you are conditioned. It's, it's not the... It's, you've, been, you've been conditioned yeah, to the acquiescence. Okay, so it's, it's, unless you consciously change that, common line is about awareness, waking up. Uh -huh. okay? Unless you consciously change that acquiescence to a intelligent resistance, not just a resist, just the opposite of, of acquiescence is useless. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you grab my arm, I pull my arm away. Yeah. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll get away, but maybe yeah. I'll just get attacked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, when we work with, with sticks, a very common thing, if I grab your weapon, very mm -hmm. commonly people will pull their weapon away. Wow. Okay. And you'll, you'll hear the old man will say, do not pull, do not pull. And the reason is, as you pull, yeah, I'm open. Yeah, there. there's nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just you're, like, just... you're basically just moving away. I'm my shield yeah. and put it behind yes. me. Yes. You're yes. just moving away. And there's actually no, there's nothing really wrong with being here. You can do a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah, so, so the pulling, you want to get... Get is, right there, but. is there no reason to pull? No, sometimes it would make sense. Right. But in general, pulling doesn't make sense. Uh -huh. So, so we're gonna, for the sake of the camera, we're gonna, we can start at very long distance. Okay. We can do whatever we want. We'll stay here. Okay. I attack you, or you attack me. It doesn't matter who starts. So go ahead and attack me. So right away, I may want to hit you here. Mm -hmm. Weapon as close to your face. Mm -hmm. Why don't I block myself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like okay. So I can hit you here. Uh -huh. So you immediately have to solve that. Yeah. Okay, so because of my hand, it's a very yes, fast yeah, design. Right, right. So, so it would make more sense to use your hand. Yeah, just yeah. Now I have, now I have to try it. So, in in this exchange, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. we're, we keep kind of interrupting each other. Do you feel that? Yeah, yeah. So I'm right. here. So let's look at what we have. When I do this first action, mm -hmm. by the way, I start to put things out there. We start building. It's sort of like we're, we're 
you're in building blocks. Mm. Like you're up here, I'm up mm -hmm. here, and I might switch and go from here, mm -hmm. and then you're here. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Yeah. Uh, That's yeah. the question because people just kind of they wander around in the dark. So we talk about tactics, the organization of circumstances in your favor. A simple tactical idea here is to think of this like a well, and I'm pushing you into the well, and you want to climb out of the well. Mm. So I'll, I'll oftentimes say, I'm pushing you into the hole, get out of the hole. Uh, so okay. who's on top right now? Yeah, you're right. So you want to get on top. Yes. Who's on top now? You're on top. I'm, who's on top now? Oh, who's on top oh, now? Yeah, who's right. on top? Uh -huh. And eventually, and this is what, where Kabbalah really separates from other exercises, I can win. Mm. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing that impedes the drill, the singular thing, that makes this feel hard to do. Spiking, spiking is, and I'll give you the definition, spiking is an unnecessary, keyword, increase or decrease in speed or power. Mm -hmm. okay. Unnecessary in the key. Now, there's a difference between a spike and a modulation, mm -hmm. an adjustment. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you grab my stick, mm -hmm. I might say, okay, I'm gonna take this off. Now you could say, okay, I'm gonna actively resist you taking it off. And when I feel that, I'm going to have to, if I went in, if, if I was originally doing it that light power, then that's not going to work at all. Right. So I have to modulate my force to match yeah. the force. That's not a spike. No, that's, that's a that's modulation. Not necessary. That's necessary. An adjustment because uh, I spike. Yes. Well, you spike. You just increase uh, force. Just, okay. It, it, again, a spike is unnecessary. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. Ultimately, if you and I, and thankfully, in all these 400,000 years ago, <laughs> it's so weird because I was just the 20-year-old guy. Me too! You look like a 20-year-old guy. In all those years, have we ever gone at each other? No, no, not once. W would that be a benefit? No. Yeah, no benefit. So, if we were going at 100, if we said, let's, say, let's find out. Okay, so if we're going at 100%, remember, a spike is an increase. Uh -huh. We're going 100%, how am I going to increase? No, there's no increase in 100%. How do I go? You, you so spiking doesn't work anyway. I've I got to say that I've noticed so many times that people do techniques, and they, the technique will come out at, say, 40%, and they do the technique at 100% because they can't do it at 40%, yeah. which means which that's right the, the technique doesn't work. Exactly. 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 Yes. So, so spiking, it's, it's so... I don't know if it's natural, it's such an, uh, an innate impulse in people that it's such a Yes. Right. Or even more so, not to lose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, the, uh, it's very good. So it's less about winning than it is about, about failing. Mm -hmm. Okay, people are desperate not to fail. And I understand, if you, think, if you, if you get very philosophical, but if you look at their lives, it may, it may be very hard for them to face another failure. Yes. Another, okay, so, so we have to be considerate of that as teachers. Mm -hmm. But it's a very good point. But spiking is, is such a, it's a disease, it's a, it's a cancer within Kamalaya, and, and, and if you don't solve it, then come up, you just go on the watch TV. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it. So if we say, if I, if I make that contact, you felt that energy, mm -hmm. so the rest of the exercise will be that energy. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. feel how light I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. the pulling is yes. useless. Yes, pulling is bad. Okay. <laughs> so, so if I'm trapped you here, mm -hmm. don't acquiesce. Yes. yes. Now, now, could you just reach to my weapon? I can't, I can't really stop you. Not, yeah, that's right. Okay, all I've done is retract it, but it couldn't really stop you if you went back. Mm -hmm. I, would have, I would have to solve yeah. it. Now, I might be able to say, okay, if you try to go through it, I could modulate, mm -hmm. or, or try to obstruct, but, but don't acquiesce. Mm -hmm. So, as I'm coming here, as I hit, yes. you can avoid blocking, and I'm traveling again, it's okay, going about the ceiling, I'm coming here, um, then I can strike, and if I, there's this one right here. Yeah, so, and here, super easy to counter. Uh -huh. um, can we say it said somewhere else in the course? I say it all the time. In fact, I did a video years ago. The, the counter to everything. Mm. What is the counter to everything? Mm. Change the circumstance. Uh -huh. Don't be there. <laughs> yeah, well, just change the circumstance. You are, and, and I'm going to put this together. Whoever you are, you're, you're the hypothetical person right now. Hold the shot, hypothetical. <laughs> oh, nice you are relying on this circumstance mm -hmm. to make this technique work. Right. So as you begin to do it, mm -hmm. most people, as you well know, most people think in terms of, you are doing technique number 43, I will counter with technique number 7. Right. Remember the old Hong Kong right. film? Look through the book. book. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we both know this does not function. Yes. First of all, I don't know, remember anything, memory is useless in, in combat. Uh -huh. um, second of all, 
what if you change the technique? My, my new mind. Well, how are you going to adapt? Yeah. So I am, cre I am creating the art as I do it, as are you. So as you do this, you, whoever you are, are relying on the circumstances that are currently present. Mm -hmm. So as you begin to do it, if I just mm -hmm. change the circumstance, mm -hmm. yeah, and it doesn't matter how I change it. Yeah, yeah. You're still, you're reliant, and if you don't have that adaptability, right. the technique just, it's like water into sand. Mm -hmm. It just goes away. So a lot of times I get, I get the black magic thing. You're, you're doing black magic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because they can't make any work. Because yeah. all I'm doing, all I'm doing, uh -huh. and, and I can't overemphasize, all I'm doing is changing the circumstances. Change. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so, yeah. so if you do, uh, like, do the classic number two snake is on. Okay, yeah, yeah. Just make something else. Number two, two snake. snake. <laughs> oh, snake! So, Sorry. So this, this is dependent upon the fact that when, when everybody is first taught this, first of all, I'm doing it in a defensive format. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Second of all, I'm allowing you to do all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, this is the thing. So, well, also, if you just think about it, you're using your posterior deltoid, a muscle that's about the size of your belt. Okay? And I'm using my pectoral muscle to resist. Right. So, yeah, oh, yeah, you're yeah, never going to beat me. No, it's not. So, if I'm not acquiescent, mm -hmm. that is not spiking. Oh, that's just. I'm just not mm -hmm. acquiescent. Yeah, you see yeah. what I mean? So, so, I say to my students that you should never get caught by a snake this time or find yourself. Mm -hmm. Find the signs are very effective, but they take too long to enter into. Mm -hmm. You have to do several steps to get to a line to zone. Snake the signs are idiotic. You should never get caught around yeah. a snake. Now, does that mean you're useless? No. Because most people are, are asleep. Yes. Okay, so, and I, I, don't, I, I really don't mean that as an insult. That's absolutely not true. No, most people just, are just asleep. Right, just like we are asleep to certain things. Sure. You know, that's why we're constantly sure. I never noticed you were getting out of point. That's because you were asleep. Okay, everybody's asleep. So, so when we're practicing this exercise, I can say, okay, you solve that, solve this, solve. all of these things, I have to be awake to everything that you're doing. Okay, so right away, you know, I know, both of us know, mm -hmm. that I can move my stick faster than you can move your legs. Yeah, that is true. So right now, right. There's just like, so you have to have already moved. Yeah, I have to go right here. You have to, yes. And now, by the way, think about what's in, by the way, think about, could I stop you from pushing down right now? Yeah, probably no. not. Yeah, uh, is... Again, small amount of muscle, you can put your whole weight on this right, thing. Right. So you can easily push through. Then you can grab it and pull it across your head, and you can just on your head anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything you did could be countered. Mm -hmm. Some of it I might even right. counter. I don't need to counter you from stepping. Mm -hmm. But but if you grab my hand like that and, I, and you push down, mm -hmm. see, this will beat you this one. Yeah. I'll do that. Right. So anytime you reach across your center mm -hmm. and you expose your punio, your, your mm -hmm. punio strips happen very quick. So as I come here like this, you, you've already counted with your feet. Yeah. You can easily push this down. What I can counter is your effort to disarm me. Mm -hmm. So as you bring this across, even if it gets all the way to here, as I just as you pull, it will feel this happen. Yeah, that's nice. and just lift that up, open, and it just goes away. Now, right away, I have mm -hmm. the setup is made. There's so many things, but come align this thing. Don't stop. Mm -hmm. Don't try to win. Except insofar as you get to a place mm -hmm. where I have checkmate. Yes, checkmate and continue. Because okay. winning is hard to beat you. Right. Mm. So, so if we're doing all of this stuff, mm -hmm. you have to, yes, you could, you could bring your point up. This is right away vulnerable yeah, yeah, to disarm. Yeah. You don't really want to do that. So as I'm coming here, right away I'm giving you my flank. And from the learning and exploration side, I want to yeah. say, look, what yeah. am I giving you? Right. you what am I giving you? Things. And if you don't seize upon it, oh, you're not awake. Some of it's about being awake, awareness. So one of the things I'll do in that regard is I'll say, as I, I think here, I'm hitting you with a plume there. You got it? Again, yeah, I'm I, forcing I you to answer. I have to answer. As I'm hitting you with a plume, you have to solve this. Yeah. You could possibly even stick out, but more likely you have to go through with your hand. Yeah. Um, then I can go after the hand right away. Yeah. This is so you want to you yeah, you you neutrally counter that so you don't go too far because I can go the other direction. Mm -hmm. So here I could possibly, I, I generally won't uh -huh. because this takes too long. Yeah. Right? It takes yeah, too long. So if I do that, I'll usually go with a uh, stick because uh, yeah, it yeah, allows yeah. a quick rip. Yes. Okay, so as we're doing all these actions, though, each mm -hmm. time, what you want to do is you want to solve it so that you climb out of the hole. Into the, yeah. Okay, get, so get to a better since place. your weapon mm -hmm. was free by me just lifting my arm, mm -hmm. you know right away there's a stick coming, so right. put your stick up. So now if I go up here, you can still block it. Yes. So now, who's on top? Yeah, I'm on top. Yeah, so get your hand free. Just break your hand up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're entirely on top. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm literally in the hole. Mm -hmm. So rather than thinking, well, I have to do technique number four or number seven, get the fuck out of the hole. You get out of the hole. <laughs> okay. So right away, prioritization, mm -hmm. quintana. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Go tight on them. I gotta stop this. Uh, okay, so now you're still on top. Mm-hmm. Now you're not. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, you're on top. Right. Okay, yeah. now you're not. Now you're not. Right. Okay, yeah. so I'll keep going back uh, to the top of the hole and there's a this on. Yeah. Okay, uh-huh. so climb out of the hole. Uh-huh. So, and, and it really is if, if you, and what happened there, and, and it, it's a normal thing that happens, is the speed started to fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we don't want that to happen. It but is kind of fun. Yeah. But, the speed goes up, the danger goes up. Ah. So we want to try to keep it down, but but not lose the spontaneity mm. that the speed was a part of. Mm. We want to keep the spontaneity and set the speed aside. Because the teeth and eyes don't, they don't get along well. And I would rather not do this with a, a soft weapon, although yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I will say that Lomeco sticks are great for doing this drill, mm. because now you can make some, some mistakes mm. and, and not pay. They're rigid and they don't have a defined handle. You don't want to be able to switch. Mm. So, by the way, here's, here's a, a good thing. Take my hand off the stick. Take your hand off the stick and how do you get your hand? Oh, gosh. I mean, yeah, you, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I, well, I'm not, yeah, yeah, but look, well, look at the complexity of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. A, lot of, a lot of different motion. And what's the likelihood? Let me, let me back up a little bit. Human beings are considered the fifth primate. Mm. Okay? So there's gorillas, monkeys, apes, etc. Humans are the fifth primate. We are primates. Our hands are designed to grab branches. Our eyes are designed to see branches. We're primates. Our eyes are not designed to see the trunks of the tree. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you don't see this very well. No, you see no. this very well. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. true. So that's why the sagittal point of attack is very difficult to perceive. Because yes. your eyes are designed to see branches. Yes. Okay, so an untrained person, I put the stick up, they'll grab it. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're primates. Okay, so. So if I want, again, organize the circumstances in my favor, if I want you to grab my arm, I'll stay here. Oh, Thank you. To right. Right. Actually, it's okay. to on top. Yeah. So if, I, if you're grabbing my arm, what are you not doing? You're not hitting me with that hand. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. please take my arm. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so I'm using the, your natural instincts, also using your, you know, uh, from your little one, the grip reflex. It's mm-hmm. suppressed in adults, but after I crack you in the kneecaps, it won't be suppressed anymore. <laughs> and when you grab my stick, you will have yeah. a hard time letting go. Yeah. It's why a lot of a lot of these methods are actually not gravity. Mm-hmm. Because as soon as I grab them, then I can yeah. 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 All of a sudden I stop. Yeah. 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 The old saying is when I grab you, you've also effectively grabbed yeah. me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so it's very realistic that somebody would grab a weapon, especially at race. Mm-hmm. The fear will drive them to grab it. So we have to have a solution. Mm-hmm. So that. Yeah. And, and mind you, I've been training with Bert for 40,000 years. He's a strong guy. He, he was way bigger when we first started because he'd just come out of USC baseball. And had, was, his thighs are like this. It's true. It was really ridiculous. True. So, tight, 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 tight. So, right away, I have yeah, leverage because I can't do just Yeah, yeah. I can't do just right. So, right here is the focus. I'll put my, my forearm right there on the stick, just like this. Oh. And I'm going to take. This one little thing called the snuff box. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. I'm going to take that tendon of the thumb. I'm going to put it right on your median tendon. So I'm going to put it right on your knee there. Um, With my hand, an extension, not flexion. An extension, not flexion. So here, now with almost no grip on the stick, I easily pull the hand up. That's okay. beautiful. So grab it tight again. So mm-hmm. easy to. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if I think about it this way, another piece of this. Is that my elbow is going down? It's a it's a it's a class one lever. Yeah, it's a lever. It goes up to it's like a, like a teeter tile like we had when we were kids. Okay, so there's three different classes of levers. There's a class one, the strongest kind. So I'm I'm not just lifting my hand up. I'm going down with my elbow. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you try that, I see. Okay. Form tight against it. So this is glued. That's it. Yes, just right, like that. Right in and then pull up and just yeah, down. that's. So yeah, now that's if I grab tight, 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 you'll stand up. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you see that the motions you're doing before, a lot of wasted time and you know, the yeah. other thing. This takes off. It works. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of this is, as your weapon comes up, you can immediately yeah. block. Right. As your weapon is right there, you block. Oh, so if you grab my stick, mm-hmm. go to hit oh, Yeah. So I nice. block is there. Okay, mm-hmm. so I can immediately solve that problem. Mm-hmm. So, back right. This is great. Okay, well. Well, again, very common. <laughs> very good. Very common, though. Very yeah. common. I would so this is what we're going to pause you for a second. I just want to sit down. Grab it up again. I don't want to reach across. But then, let, let, let's say you did. What okay. we refer? Let me take my stick out for a second. What we call this is a bayonet uh, strap. Yeah. Use it like you have a bayonet in the uh-huh. weapon. The problem is you've lost this hand. Yeah. And like I said, your grip reflex will be very inspired when, when I start breaking parts of you. You may not be able to let go. Mm-hmm. Because you'll be so rigidified. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's not wrong. 
And that's but it's not optimal did it with open hand. Yes. This one also, so you don't. I don't. Lock I don't. I don't commit to the grip. So yes. this is a very common grab, though. Mm -hmm. We sometimes refer to this situation parallel bars. Mm -hmm. This happens a lot. Yes. Two guys grabbing weapons. So have yourself that. So you I remember. I know it's been like three weeks since your medical training. Do you know what this part of the hand is called? That's called the, the lower part of the hand. <laughs> That's yes. <laughs> this is the thenar eminence. Oh, I this do is, remember that. This is the hypothenar thenar eminence. This is the thenar eminence. So when I grab your stick, I want you to grab the thenar eminence. Mm. Yes. So now you're going to go again. You're going to go around my thumb with your stick. Mm. And now you're going to use the last knuckle here as your fulcrum and not go through the fingers, but go through the hand. Yes. Okay. So, oh. grab that tight. Tight, tight, tight. Uh, okay. Bert has large hands, so I'm going to go around his thumb really tight. Yeah. So what I don't want to do is try to keep you a strength. Yeah. So what I do with my body is I bring it to me. Uh, I go around and now I just mm. go around. This is okay, so it, it becomes, it becomes a single action. That's good. You see it? So it is actually two actions. So bring it toward, let me pause you for a second. My arms follow a natural track. Mm -hmm. I don't run into myself, so I go past myself. So as I grab that hand, I let my arms follow the natural track. Yes, and that peels it right off, and I have this in the You see? So now remember, I, I'm, a, I'm a primate. Okay? Mm -hmm. I'm the fifth primate. So as you do this, my hand is now free as you go to hit me. Mm -hmm. I can grab my weapon again. Yeah, no, no, I okay, so you've got to be that. careful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you grab my weapon, right. I know that you've got visual monitors in your head. <laughs> okay, <laughs> eyes. They see things coming at them. When you get hit in the leg, you see things going toward you, mm -hmm. not coming mm -hmm. at you. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yes. So, uh -huh. so I want to inspire you to see things coming at you so that you see won't block that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you will prioritize the brain, the face, so I will threaten the face so that that's where you put your defenses so that you won't defend that. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we, have, we have this grip, we have this grip. Mm -hmm. Another grip that actually comes up is that grip. Hmm. This grip is awesome. Mm -hmm. This one is interesting. You've got to be careful when you practice this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make your arm into a bolt, and this is a wrench. Oh, okay. So all I'm going to do is turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> I could really hurt you if yeah, I crank it hard. If crank, yeah, because I crank it hard. And the I'm, I'm not hold tight. I'm not doing this. Yeah. yeah you're bringing that's the I'm making the pivot point here now. Mm -hmm. I have to make the pivot point here. Uh, so if I do that to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't go here. I just, just go under. Yes. Right. And remember, if you go too far, I'll just go to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so, 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 so as soon as he comes out, exit. Then just exit. Uh, so pull up. Pull up. I take this up. Oh. Yeah, and then so there's nothing to grab. Yeah, because if not, if I just go like this. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Do the so next one. interesting. Now, now, we we would refer to these as rigid grip breaks. Mm. I'm grabbing you, and I'm attempting to uh -huh. take rigid control of your weapon. Mm. A real problem. Um, there are also less rigid or soft, lax grips where I'm holding onto your weapon. And it's just uh, like yeah. this. So this, this is, is hard. More difficult. Because I can, if you go for the rigid brick break, yeah. I can, I can uh, kill it. Uh, like, again, changing the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, a couple of ways I can solve that. First of all, if I'm going here, you, what you want to do is you want to take this fulcrum away from me by just shoving this underneath mm -hmm. my arm. Okay. So now I have nothing. So what I want to do is I super glue my forearm to you, so you can't mm -hmm. do that. Uh, okay. I just stick, just stickiness. Okay. So if I'm here, you stick your forearm, and as I try to just stick stuff. Now what you did, see how I'm right against you? Yeah. You killed the technique. Mm -hmm. Keep your distance. Keep the space. Keep the space. So don't let me take this. Now you've got Because you'll feel it. You'll feel I'm strong here. Uh huh. Ah, uh, yeah. I lost it. Yeah. Move the space. Move the mm -hmm. space. I actually I'll felt that your your body was you, keeping you kill it. Yeah, you, you kill it. So so you understand from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, understanding maintenance of space and using space. This is a perfect example. Yeah, you have to have a great example. On this one. This one is a rigid grip break. This one's relatively easy to beat because I can just literally take your thumb off. Mm -hmm. What I don't want to do, I haven't mentioned it here yet. A phrase I use all the time is I do not want to elicit a countering response. Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you to counter it. 
Yeah. Okay, so when you grab my stick here, you don't feel anything. Yeah. You stick your hand up. You don't feel any risk. Yeah. This one can can make people feel in danger. Uh -huh. And this yeah. you want a predator response, like I'm biting you. Mm -hmm. And that's very powerful. So I don't want to give you that. Ah, yeah. I don't so I don't subtle. make you feel threatened. So you don't even realize I've taken it away. So another way you can handle this one, if he is not being rigid, he's being so loose, uh -huh. is I'm gonna switch my own grip so that I can roll my hand so I can go back to this grip. Oh nice. <laughs> okay? So in the yeah. middle of fuss fighting, you grab my weapon. I make you think about this one, I take that one. Uh, I'm going to do that again so they can see that. So I, I had your weapon, I strike at you. Okay. And you can counter it just by pushing yeah. your weapon upward, yeah. that's it. So as I'm doing that, I switch, and then I can roll my weapon out, trap and you, and then you down, and yeah, you're on top. The disease is to think of that as a technique. Mm. Now let's do technique number seven. It becomes, we isolate it, we simplify it, and, and we throw, throw it in the garbage. You know, I came up with, can I mention sure. something? Uh, I was thinking this from science. When people start analyzing, like you just said, okay, this is technique one, this is technique two. Yeah. So you take this amazing insect that's incredible, and we're gonna study it. What's the first thing a scientist does? Exactly. Kill it. <laughs> kill it. Yeah, 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 kill this thing. Take it apart. <laughs> right. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, no yeah, yeah. it's no longer a bug. Yeah. It's, it because so. You don't want to kill it. This is the beauty. It has to happen in the flow. Yeah. So grab my stick here. Okay. I got you here. Okay. So you're going to make me block this as you switch your grip so that you can now. I'm going to let go of here yeah. for a second. You want to end up yeah, here. Okay. okay. So as I'm here, you roll here. that and then you can do it. Yeah. See what I mean? So make me feel this one. Right. So like, oh, well, I have to prioritize yeah, it. You yeah. take this and, and then roll out. And now from here, yeah. you could, because of the way you rolled out, so uh -huh. let's switch your grip. So put your weapon out just so you can see. Mm -hmm. As I come here and I roll this out, because of my position, I can just go directly yeah, yeah, to him yeah, and to him. So nice. as you grab again, oh, oh, that's it. So strike at me, yeah, now switch the grip, take that out, directly up, yes, and right back at him. Now if you've had my weapon this way, mm -hmm. and you did that same action, you rolled out, trolled through, hit upward mm -hmm. and across, mm -hmm. here, you immediately have a lock. No, 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 oh. grab my wrist. And Right. Oh! <laughs> wow, actually, it's a done that killer lock. I haven't done that one. Now, I'll show you because you're used to doing locks. Uh -huh. This is, you're used to this one. Yeah. But this one is. Yeah, that's a lot better. Now, you're feeling it with. Pretend. Feel it with come and Do I have to? No, I <laughs> feel the difference. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that is. Instant broken humorous, okay? Yeah. And it won't be humorous when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Put on your phone. <laughs> So, can I explore that sure. just a moment, please? I must say, so, yeah. this idea this is like it's not, it's, the elbow it's not, Yeah, it's not really a lock. No. It's more of an irritation. Yeah, it's an irritation. you irritation. step on the foot and still the yeah. will come up. So, this is fantastic. That, no, that is a lock. Oh, it's fantastic. And by the way, it works very well against this one. Oh, oh my wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. what we're used to. We always did this one. Oh, we're used to is this. Yeah. But so here, I pop this up, turn the wrist on, oh, instant break. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's really Woo. cool. So, so if I've gotten you here, take my hand off. Yeah. So do it the way I showed you. Okay, so, so uh, uh, form on the stick. Oh, this one. And pop it. Now grab the wrist. Now you're right there. Now strike. Okay. So you strike. Boom. And then you pop into the face. And then you lock. And you want to turn my hand, pump. External rotation, that's it. External rotation. And the yeah. more that you kind of drop my stick, the more that you can create an angle on my hammer, oh, okay. the tighter it will be. Of course. Now, as you're going down, you've got a huge amount of pressure. I see. Yeah, because yeah. here I'm almost parallel. So a little, little uh, anatomical. Cool. Yes, thank you. <sighs> when I, for example, unpleasant. Unpleasant. Unpleasant, pushing on the, on the radius. Yes. When I go against here, and I push against this, you feel the bone. Yeah. When I go against your shin, you feel it. Yeah. Because these are exposed bones. What is it that's causing the pain? Uh, I would say on those, it, I don't know if it's nerve or it's just... Well, nerve is always going to be a ca yeah. causing factor yeah. in a sort of general term. But this is more pressure and crushing. So there, there is a sheath, or like a mesh, if you will, oh, my of my nerves my over your bones called the periosteum. Oh, periosteum. That's what we're attacking. Oh, interesting. It's the periosteum. When we do an attack on the bicep, we're hitting the spindle cell of the bicep. Uh -huh. But underneath, the bony edge, when, when I do techniques like this, where I'm uh -huh. hitting the, yeah. that's periosteum. Oh, okay. When we're attacking with a weapon, periosteum, periosteum is what we're after. That's why, as much as this is cool, this is way yeah, better than this. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay? <laughs> just a flip it like that and yeah. it changes the whole day. So, yeah. so, you know me, I'm very much about the specifics with anatomy. So, yes. so, so many martial arts instructors will say, the arm. <laughs> yeah, the arm. Yeah. And that the, the torso. <laughs> There's a lot more to it. This is like the... the uh, oh, the interphalangeal joints. Interphalangeal yeah. joints, The proximal yeah. interphalangeal joints. That's the easy yeah. joint right here. But that's what it actually is. Yes. Like we're and, talking about and getting if you're going to truth. call yourself a teacher, and if you're going to talk about it fundamentally, let's just use Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, for example. What's the purpose? It is to dismantle the skeleton of another human being. You should know the names of what you're doing. Right. Okay? On bar. Yeah. What's, bar. What's, what's the elbow joint called? Most people don't know. Yeah. They don't know what the, what the acromion follicular joint is. Okay? They should know these names. There's five joints that make up your shoulder. Five. <laughs> Not just one. It's so hard to, to <laughs> repair. Yes! Okay, so it's, yes, it's very complicated because it's not just a joint, it's not just a, and then by the way, it's not a true ball and socket joint. Mm. Your hip is, but your shoulder is not. Your shoulder has a, a donut-shaped labrum, and the head of your humerus, the greater trochanter of your, of your humerus, your humerus sits in there and slides around it, but it's not a true socket. Mm. That's why your shoulder can dislocate through these lines, because it's just connected by some relatively small muscles that most people do stupid exercises with to destroy. <laughs> up and up, up and behind the neck presses and pull. Yeah, it's, it's like taking a saw to your head. It's not good. So, in our play, yes. I will say solve that problem. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, woo. Uh, solve, okay. Yeah. In our minutes, yeah. yeah. Cool. So now, let's right. say I took the same thing and I, I attacked you. Stick it. Okay. Not it. Ah, ah. Nice. Okay. So if I say, okay, I'm glad you're here, stop this. Mm -hmm. Stick it. Oh, snake it is? Yes. Okay. Don't grab that. Ah. Okay, so we can create, and I hate the words, I hate them because of what they have become. Uh -huh. We can create progressions. Yes. But progressions in flow, I mean... Such bullshit. Yeah. I Just mean, bullshit. Yeah, you could, again, you could name... That's one of yeah, I have an issue with people taking an art that's so alive and categorizing it to death. Kind of, well, you can do that to death. Yeah, I, remember, I, I have a, you'll appreciate this. It's training with this old Filipino guy. And you're showing me some cool techniques. And I was actually working on a view at the time. And this is, so this is back in the 80s. And I came back to the view, and we were doing our usual kind of extrapolating, tearing apart, dissecting it. And I came up with like two or three variations on this technique that you showed me. And I went back and I was, I was so proud of myself. <laughs> I said, I want to show you these variations. And he proceeded to show me like 150 variations. Mm -hmm. And I, in my 20s, foolishly, or I'm glad I asked the question, how, how do you keep all these in your mind, how do you memorize all this thing? Because all I'm just making them up. Uh, That's the art. And the creating. So he was appreciative that I had moved into creation, but I was still stuck in the, I got three variations, I could get four, I could get five, a progression, um, hogwash. I, I'll use an analogy, it might be a good, a good point to, to kind of wrap this up. Okay. You're, you're a, an intelligent guy, well spoken. What do you think the likelihood is that if I gave you a notebook and a pen, that you could write down every word in your vocabulary? Oh, I could not do that. I would have to write over You'd have to be expressing years. something. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It would, either a question would have to be asked, or you, you would be trying to express something. But how often... I, I could not just... Yeah, just you don't have access to it. So how often have you been either writing or speaking in a, in a word that you almost have never used, all of a sudden it comes out and it fits perfectly and you use it and you're like, right. I, don't, I didn't even secreted. know I knew that word. Right. Yeah, today you said you secreted it out. And I said, oh, you used that? I have not used that in a very long time. <laughs> and, uh, with Mark, and, 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 he was, speaks English. Yeah, what, <laughs> I can speak English with you. I reckon I speak in the English. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the likelihood that you could write it down is zero. Yeah. This is the way martial arts should be. It's not a memorized progressions of lists mm. and techniques. Mm. I remember when we were both training together with the same teacher. And people were constantly writing down everything that teacher was saying. I would never write anything down. <laughs> I just, I'm not going to do that. And I remember, absorbing. Well, I remember six months later, people would ask me, with their own notebook, do you know what this means? Do you know how to do this? <laughs> yes, I do. And I remember, because I was actually focused on learning it rather than writing it down. Yeah. Not a categorization yeah. or a, okay, I have it here. There was a particular guy that we trained with in a lot of classes, I remember. He would write everything down, but I asked him that one time. He goes, "Well, no, I never practiced. I got it in my notebook." 
Yeah. Yeah. Worth it. Worth it. Yeah. Totally, totally. And, and that's the thing. We're trying, I've oftentimes used the analogy of a, a speech maker, somebody who becomes a very good orator. Mm. You can stand up and inspire an audience with a memorized speech. Mm. It's, it's, it's a general, genuine skill. Mm. Um, I'm always very comfortable with public speaking, but I don't consider myself an orator. I just kind of. I can just do it. I'm not, I'm, I'm not afraid of being in front of people. Um, but as much as we're not speech makers, we're not trying to impress our opponent with our memorized techniques. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to be conversational. Mm -hmm. Which means I have to listen to you, I have to watch you, observe you, I have to see how my point of view is affecting you. Or maybe what you say changes my point of view because, hey, no, I never considered that before. Mm -hmm. It's an actual mm -hmm. conversation. And that goes back to the when you mentioned that one day at the academy uh, conversation, you mentioned it Dan and Santo, yeah. you said, you're like, yeah, I look at Sombrata like it's a conversation. Yeah. I remember going, oh, wow. Oh, that's a really good way of putting it. But not just a conversation where, where we're playing word association games. I say yeah. tree, you yeah. say no, ladder, a, right? A conversation. I'm where... listening and, and conveying ideas and you're doing the same. That's what it should be. And how could you, let's have a pattern conversation. <laughs> that's... That's why we have bad actors. Yes. Because they, they're trying to make a conversation and it's choreographed and it just looks terrible. My wife and I were just recently watching, you know, in the, in the pandemic recently, when everybody's stuck in front of the TV. Well, let's, let's watch this film. A couple of main actors in it. Obviously, a first time director because it was so on the nose, as they say. Oh, like, yeah. Just Instead of implying something or letting it be picked up through it, in your email and subtlety, let us say the words exactly as they are written on the page. <laughs> <laughs> and we couldn't take it. We're like, yeah. these are good actors. What the hell is going on? And we realized it was the director. The director probably, yeah. He was probably a writer director, and he was super wedded to his words. Yeah, he, so, I wrote these words. So he doesn't want you to give it your own feel or, or flavor. He wants you to say the words exactly as they are written on the page. And we couldn't take it five minutes and yeah. it just turned out. We couldn't take it. And that's. In a nutshell, so often what martial arts becomes. And it's what we, we want to break away from. And, and Kamalai, I don't know if you know this, but in, in the Tagalog language, my, my last name, Makita, means to see. Yeah, Makita. Yeah. yeah. So, so Kamalai. Oh, that's it's a really nice. Yes, it really is. <laughs> yeah, because my cool. objective as a teacher, and, and it, what, I, I wasn't made aware of this until this was very clear to me already, but my objective as a teacher has never been. I've never been interested in, in training guys for sports. Sport martial arts to me is contradiction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sportsmanship, I don't I I rail against sportsmanship. Okay, so I oftentimes I oftentimes say that one of the qualities you're trying to develop as a martial artist is the capacity for depraved ruthlessness. Mm. Yes. Okay, that's not very sporting. On, on demand. Yes, right. it's not very sporting. No. no okay, no. I'm gonna use everything you do against you. Okay, everything. Mm -hmm. So that's Vicious, and, and I want to have that capacity. I want to holster it, and I want to live a peaceful life and a loving life with my family, etc. I don't want to walk around with that intention in my mind. Mm -hmm. So, but as a teacher, I, I came to the realization after almost forty-five years of teaching that what I really seek to do is is a to challenge people: Are you living the life that you aspire to? Live? Are you mm -hmm. being the person you aspire to be? And b, if we're going to look at martial arts, let's look at it devoid of, of nationalistic or, or stylistic impedances. Let's mm -hmm. look at principle, let's look at science, the applied sciences of physics, anatomy, physiology, etc. Let's look at all of that together and let's link up to what our bodies are actually capable of doing. Let's remove the idea of, of fantasy, of, of fanciful dreams of I, I wanted to hit the guy with a triple spinning, jumping, back kick. Those things are athletically interesting and worth, worth exploring and, and playing with. But on a combative level, very unlikely. More likely that, that you won't kick at all. Kicking is low on the scale of high percentage techniques in a real fight. Mm -hmm. um, you really and, don't want this, this coming from someone who is an exceptional. No, but and you're an exceptional kicker. Like, I appreciate it. Right and, and therefore, even though more so than in a real situation, I don't want to give up my mobility and my balance for a second unless I know it's going to pay off. Yeah, it's going one foot for a second. Yeah, unless I know it's going to pay off. One of, one of my Filipino teachers used to say, the best head kick is when the opponent is down. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> okay, so, it, 
it's, again, the kind of ruthlessness, it, you can't argue with that. You know, it's really, it's really cool to be able to whack you in the head, but look at the vulnerability of it. Now, I have used my argument in real life many times, and I have whopped people and dropped them, and they never saw it coming. Mm -hmm. So I know I can do that, but I don't recommend it. Yeah. Again, the vulnerability, the, the, the benefit risk benefit, yeah. just doesn't work. With weaponry, do I want to, well, do I really want to get that cool for ready for combat? Mm -hmm. No, it was like, does, does right. it, I mean, I can do these things where I'm flipping around the back and like, what the hell is that going to do in combat? Yeah. This is just what I do when I'm waiting for the students to show up for combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> all it is, isn't it? So, but combatively, and you know this word, pataya and pataya, it's killing. That's what the art is? It's killing. It's not for show. It's not in tablado. It's not, this is good, and it's good to develop emotions and, and body awareness, etc., but this art is pataya. This art is to kill. Pataya. This art is I fuck you. Okay? You're done. You're done. Yeah. You're done. And, 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 now I'm get deep. and the risk for me is so great that if we're going to fight, I want to spend maybe three seconds fighting. I, I look at, going back to sport, currently, when you and I were kids, it was 15 rounds for boxing. That was 12 mm -hmm. rounds. Okay, so let's say we're going to fight 12 rounds, 3 minutes, 12 rounds, that's 36 minutes of continuous fighting. At the end of which, the winner is going to be decided by a fat guy sitting on the side and goes, eh, I think he won. <laughs> that's a useless martial art. Yeah. Yeah, that's not a martial art. 36 minutes of continuous pummeling, and you get to somebody deciding that you won. Yes. And it's controversial because, well, the other guy kind of looked like he won too. And we like him because he's cuter, he has, yeah. he has better ads on TV. So it's such bullshit. Yeah. So real fighting, three seconds. If it's going 30 seconds, Something's going wrong. No, that's really Something's going wrong. Bad. Okay, so, really bad. so, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for the You're my decades You're my of brotherhood. And this is somebody I can rely on. Like, when I say we like rely on, I can count on him for anything. He's proven it over the decades, and it's like, wow, what, a, what an honor. So, thank you. Of course, brother. Always, always.